We all use lifts or elevators, you know the metal boxes that just take you from floor to floor. They've been around for years, pretty boring, eh? But not necessarily. Today I'm at Battersea Power Station in London and until 1975 this was a coal-fired power station producing electricity for this whole area. Five years later in 1980 it got grade two listed status which means it just can't get knocked down and for many many years people were threatening to develop it and change it into flats and finally now it's been developed into a stunning shopping centre plus apartments and offices as a whole mixed-use development. In September 2012, the power station became the property of a Malaysian consortium of fund managers and property developers in a totally derelict condition after decades of being exposed to the elements. But after a few years of design and construction in 2022, ah yes, and those four chimneys are actually brand new. They were demolished and rebuilt. So in October 2022, the shopping centre opened and what a grand shopping centre it is. Its main areas are within the two main turbine halls and are full of very smart high-end shops together with a cinema and restaurants. What I really like about the design is the developers have kept a lot of the industrial feel of the power station together with pieces from its history like the main control room that's now a bar and more than one gantry crane that used to service the turbines in these halls. As well as a shopping centre in the main building, the surrounding area has also been developed and now quite literally thousands of apartments have gone up on the site with more restaurants and offices and a new underground station to service it all, making this a whole new area of London to live in, which I think is excellent after so many years of dereliction and waste. So that's all very well and I would say it's a really nice environment. If you want to come shopping in London, or if you're lucky enough to live around here, it's really very good. But it's not what I've come here for. What I've come here for is down here. Lift 109 is the latest London tourist attraction at Battersea, which is a unique lift that uses the northwest chimney of the X power station to take guests up to the top to get some excellent panoramic views of London. The experience starts with some interactive displays together with a bit of history of its operation followed by the obligatory film show. Welcome to Lift 109 at Battersea Power Station. Battersea Power Station is a towering masterpiece of brick, concrete and steel. Prepare for liftoff. After this you take a very standard lift to the top of the main building, 55 metres high which is where the bottom of the chimney starts. From here you go another level or two up a circular staircase around the inside of the chimney where you enter the panoramic lift at 67 metres up. The lift is totally glass, the sides and ceiling, and it can take 40 people. Before you know it, you're ascending the chimney at a fairly slow pace of one meter per second. And with the addition of some music and some colored lighting to add to the performance, you eventually come out the top with all the passengers giving a synchronized wow. Although I think that wow is just recorded and is a part of the background music track myself. Once at the top, there is no doubt that the views of London are stunning and similar in some ways to being on the London Eye, just a bit further west. From here, you can really see the size of the Battersea Power Station development and all the new apartments and offices and get a great view of the south and west of London, including the Wembley Arch in the distance and the tracks going in and out of Victoria Station. You get exactly eight minutes at the top, which although it's plenty of time to check out the usual landmarks, the time does go by quickly and before you know it, you're descending back to the bottom of the chimney and back down to get funnelled into the gift shop in the traditional tourist way.
So that's a quick overview of what the general public sees. But what I find really interesting is the hidden engineering that goes in to make that eight minutes of viewing possible. So let's rewind a little bit and I'll show you what no one sees and some of the challenges involved. Firstly, the lift shaft or chimney, should I say, is open to the elements. I've never seen a lift or lift shaft before open to the sky, which obviously brings challenges that you don't normally need to worry about, such as weather, rain, snow, freezing conditions, 24 seven. And it's not as if you can close the top of the chimney. So all the electrical and mechanical systems in the shaft, together with the lift itself, have had to be designed and manufactured to cope with the weather, which isn't something that you normally have to worry about in a standard closed lift shaft. The chimney being open means the glass part of the cab needs regular cleaning, which they do from a cleaning deck just above the cabin, which you can see when you first get in the lift. I mean, you wouldn't be very happy that when you finally get to the top, the glass is really dirty and all the photos you take all a little bit fuzzy. But even in good weather, because the panoramic glass acts like a greenhouse, the lift can go from a cold, dark chimney to blaze in sunlight in seconds. So it also contains quite a hefty air conditioning system. The next challenge is the lift actually comes out the top of the chimney, which is unusual because most lifts are supported from above with the lift gear above it. But in our case, obviously there cannot be anything above it. There's just sky. So how does that work? Well, I've knocked up a bit of a model to show you how this works because there's more behind it than you may think. Just to take you through this model quickly. First of all, we've got an intermediate level at 55 meters. This is where the first normal lift brings you to, which is essentially at the top of the building and at the bottom of the chimney. Then to get up to the panoramic lift, you have to take a circular staircase that's within the bottom of the chimney, up 12 meters to the entry of the glass lift. This is my glass lift with lots of really well-dressed people in. And at the end of the ride, you come back down to this level, and come out a different door so the in and the out doesn't mix. At the top of the chimney, there's a fairly beefy ring beam that has quite a lot of pulleys and mechanical equipment bolted to it. That's quite instrumental in how this gets pulled up to the top. So why can't the lift go further than the top of the chimney? Because that's something that worries most people normally halfway up. Well, let's have a look. If I just raise the lift in the chimney, you can then see the panoramic glass section of the lift is only half the story. You've got another section of the cab underneath, which is just as big, if not slightly bigger, than the top section. But the passengers will never ever know that. It's below them. They'll never see it. And it's the top of this bottom section where the cables are attached, where it gets pulled to the top of the chimney, meaning that the panoramic section can come out the top and the lower section still stays in the chimney, just like this. Unlike my model where the cables are actually coming out the top, the real thing has pulleys on this ring beam where the cables go back down to the right at the bottom of the chimney where the motors are because there's no room for them anywhere else. And then there's a whole system of pulleys up and down with counterweights or whatever just to be able to fit it all in such a tight space in a chimney like this. So when the cables pull this bottom section up to the ring beam, it literally can't go any further. Although on your way up, you do feel you're gonna have a bit of a Willy Wonka moment and come straight out the top. But this isn't the most interesting part of this lift. You see, when everyone else was enjoying the views of London, I was wondering if the lift breaks down, how do we get out? You see, in a normal lift, you're never that far away from a floor or a landing where the doors can be opened by emergency services to allow you a means of escape, even if it's climbing along a fireman's ladder. But on this lift, there are no doors or landings. There's a door at the bottom, or you can be poking out the top. And although some people might think you can get rescued from a helicopter at the top, you may break down halfway up the chimney. So how do people get rescued if there is a breakdown? Well, here is the clever bit an emergency lift, a completely separate lift that has its own systems, power supply, UPS, completely separate to the glass panoramic lift. So if this breaks down, this has got half a chance of still working and it travels in the same shaft or chimney. So how does this all work? Right, 
this is the sequence. There's two hatches in the floor of the panoramic lift. The first one gives access via a ladder down to the cabin below. Although this has got a lot of mechanical and electrical equipment in, there's also a cabin in here that you can actually climb down into. So with people in the lower cabin, this emergency lift go up on its own rails under its own steam and essentially dock with the existing panoramic lift which then means up to eight people that have climbed down into the bottom section of the lift can get into the emergency lift and be brought all the way down to the bottom of the chimney and away to safety and then the emergency lift goes back up again to get the next eight and so on until it's completely clear. But there's a further twist. Wheelchair users. You see obviously wheelchair users can't just use a ladder to get from the panoramic lift down to the bottom section. So in the second of the two hatches is not a ladder but a platform lift. Now a platform lift is a very light type of lift, the sort of thing you might see in a department store just to get wheelchair users from one level to another. And the same is in here that just gets a wheelchair plus one person from the top level down to the bottom level. The wheelchair can then be pushed into the emergency lift and then taken down and away to safety. And this is where we end up with three lifts in one shaft. We have the panoramic lift, we have the emergency lift, and then within the panoramic lift, we have the platform lift going from one level to another. That's three distinct lifts, all in one shaft, or chimney, should I say, which I've never heard of before, and I've never come across before. If you know of something similar to this, please let me know. But I think this is unique and a one of a kind. Now, the emergency lift is not only used as an emergency lift. This lift is used day to day to get wheelchair users from the lower level up to the boarding level of the panoramic lift while it's up the top for those eight minutes and out the way. Once it comes down again, wheelchair users can get on with everyone else, enjoy the view, but when they come back down again, they have to wait for it to go up again for this lift to come and collect them and then get out of the attraction. This whole setup is a quite an extraordinary machine and there's no doubt that it's a one of a kind piece of engineering. The eight years of design and fabrication that went into making this lift operate reliably with a safe system of escape and all the usual backups and certification that's required in the UK is extraordinary and such a shame that the public don't get to see the great engineering that's involved just to take them safely up to take some photos on their phone which they'll probably never look at again. So there you go, everything you want to know about Lift 109 at Batsy. I would highly recommend it, especially the views at the top, absolutely quite stunning. If you're not into lifts, then just the shopping and the environment and the restaurants are a nice place to be. Remember, subscribe, watch the other videos, and I will see you next time.